Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're back in War Thunder looking at the ME262A2A Sturmvogel, or Sturmvogel, depending on where you're from. And this is the last of the gift vehicles that was given away by Gaijin through their Christmas challenges. Uh, the other three you can see on my channel. If you want to go to the updates 1.65 playlist, you'll see them all there. And this is a tier 5 gift and I believe this is the first tier 5 gift I've ever given away apart from the E100 which was uh, during the Thunder League stuff which only I think maybe 100 or 200 people got so I believe this is the first tier 5 plane that they've given away and it's not bad it's a decent tier 5 6.7 plane. One of the issues that I have with it is that it doesn't have that premium bonus. One reason why I really like the F7 F3, which is the uh, Tiger Cat they gave away last year, is that it gets its premium bonus. And uh, also they gave away the A26, which doesn't get the premium bonus. So it seems a bit odd, like they seem to be a bit wishy-washy with this. But if we look at the ME262A2A, it's actually in the tech tree, so it's not in the premium vehicles like a lot of the other gifts that you usually get. It's actually after the Polkestora, the ME262A-1 slash U4. So I'm just wondering if there's going to be anything after the A-1 slash U4. Uh, apart from this A2A, I hope there is. I'm sure there are vehicles that can be put in. But let's focus on this ME262. So it's very similar to the other ME262s in game. Uh, basically it has uh, very similar flight characteristics. It takes a long time to get some decent speed up. But once it gets that speed it's pretty good at keeping it. It turns very well compared to a lot of other jets. You want... Well, the thing is with the ME262, I'm generally not very good at flying it. Uh, I'm much more of either... A, uh, I like to go full one way or full the other, so when I'm talking about I either want a plane uh, which is a jet which is full on energy retention or full on turn fighter mode. So the turn fighter mode would be something like a sea meteor or a vampire and the other flip side of the coin is like a MiG-15. Whereas the ME262 is always in a weird ground. Uh, for me personally, but that's I, I always see people do well in the ME262. Tazzy is a person who, when you watch him use the 262, he is wonderful in it. But for me personally, for some reason, it just doesn't fit with my playstyle. But I can still understand the benefits and cons as well of this vehicle. So, if we're comparing it to something else, the easiest comparison we can make is to the ME262A1A. They both have basically exactly the same speeds, exactly the same flight characteristics. The only difference is that the A1A Schwalb gets four uh, Mark 108s, where the ME262A2A gets two Mark 108s, and also the, uh, the gift vehicle you can actually get bombs on it, whereas on the Schalb you can only get uh, rockets, the air-to-air -air R4Ms, uh, but also on the uh, Sturmvogel you can get two 250 kilos or one 500, they are your bomb loads. You do have to unlock them, uh, but that's completely fine uh, when it comes down to it. Being an aircraft you get decent research compared to tanks, so I'm not too bothered uh, as much about the modifications. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare it to other planes uh, that you would rather use, or which you may not. So, when we're looking at an air-to-air -air battle, where, for me personally, when we're looking at middlemen aircraft, uh, kind of attackers, or uh, kind of fighters which are supposed to be in a bit more of a bomber role, something like... Uh, an F-8F, for me, is not going to be as good as something like a Spitfire Mark 24. Because an F-8F, you can build it as if it's um, an attacker. Or maybe a better comparison is the... Uh, let's just go... Yeah, let, let's use this comparison. So, comparing an AD-2 to an F-8F, right? Everybody knows that the AD-2 is much of a middleman aircraft. It is an attacker, whereas the F-8F-1 is supposed to be a fighter. So when you compare those two aircrafts, if you're in an out-and-out -out fighter 
aerialistic battle slog fights, you would rather be in the F-8F. Uh, it just is better in most of the ways that you want it to be better in. Whereas the attacker, even though it does have some ground strike capabilities, generally that's not going to help you that much. Especially when on your team you're going to have uh, four B-29s or four B-17s, uh, which are going to mop the floor with most things anyway. So when it comes to these middleman aircraft, such as the Mosquito, the AD-2, uh, the Doe 335, uh, the ME262 A-1U4, I just feel like there are better options, uh, which is where you either go full bomber or you either go full fighter. The middleman idea doesn't really come into play until we get to ground forces or enduring confrontation, but we'll talk about them in a bit. So, the Sturmvogel is always going to lose out to something like an ME262 A-1A Schwalbe, just because of the fact that it is geared slightly uh, towards bombing instead of fighting, whereas the ME262 Schwalbe has more cannons, it's much better in the head-on, and also something to always mention when we're talking about the ME262s. The Mark 108s are very low velocity and pretty inaccurate uh, when it comes down to it, even with the new 30mm cannon, um, the new 30mm cannon modification, they still don't really fire straight, <laughs> which is kind of an interesting thing. If you don't believe me, go into a test drive and try and shoot uh, straight, see where your, uh, your bullets go or your shells go everywhere. So, this is kind of an advantage sometimes. If we look at the British, one of the great things about the British aircraft, especially with the four Hispanos, uh, if we're looking at something like a Mark 24, Mark 22, Sea Fury, uh, Tempest Mark II, you can cover a large area with those Hispanos, which is why they're pretty good at taking out bombers and great at uh, when you're following someone trying to uh, basically snipe them out because you can cover a larger area with your guns because of the spread of each individual gun and because it only takes one or maybe two hits to take out something then you can see the advantage of it now this is what I see with the Mark 108s the Mark 108s may be slow uh, they may have quite a large spread, but if you hit something with one or two of those shells and it, you know, it detects on the server's end, then you're gonna do a lot of damage. So, that is why the Schwalb is a lot better than the Sturmvogel, because the Schwalb creates a larger spread, fires, um, has a much larger burst mass when it comes down to it, so in a head-on or in a turn, you are spreading more bullets all over the place for someone to run into. Um, but when we're comparing the two vehicles, that's really the only difference, since they use the same guns. It would be interesting if this ME262 had the Mark 103s on the Horton, like on the Horton, that would completely change the vehicle, and I, in my opinion would make it a lot better just because of the high velocity and also the uh, tank busting skills that we see in the Horton with 95 millimeters of penetration at most with the HVAR. But unfortunately we don't get that in the Sturmvogel, instead we get a few bombs. So comparing it to the ME262 A-1, I believe the A-1 is better than the A-2, but that's completely fine, it has a slightly higher BR. So, we must compare it to other planes. Is it better than the HE-162? Yes, the HE-162 is a pile of garbage, and has been a pile of garbage for a very long time. Uh, it's an unfortunate plane which doesn't really fit uh, in any way. You could basically put it at 6.0, and it would still struggle because of all the super props that we've had in the game, uh, been put in the game over the last few patches. The HE-162 is kind of a... Uh, kind of a tyrant of the past, if that makes sense in War Thunder. Basically what has happened with it is that there's been so many updates and so many new vehicles added to the game, it has become useless because all of these wonderful vehicles have been added, such as the uh, Griffin Spitz, such as the uh, La 9, the Yak-3 VK, uh, all of the Japanese uh, super props that they have at high levels. So, it's unfortunate, and if you get in a jet match in it, then you basically don't do anything better than anyone else. You get out turned, you get out dove, 
you are definitely not as fast as most most things, and if you decide to spool up like you would in an ME262 and try to get to a high speed, you'll find your engine will melt. So yeah, it's kind of annoying. When we look on the bomber front at 6.7, we have the Arado. The first Arado, the 234B2. Now the Arado is quite good, basically because even on its uh, default, well maybe not its default, but definitely on uh, three, yeah, because it gets three 250s and three 500s right off the bat. So with the three 500s, you can spawn in the air, knock out a base, go back to the airfield, uh, get up, uh, try and hit something else, maybe some tanks. So you're always guaranteed at least some research with the thing. And it's good in ground forces as well. When we compare the Polkistora to the Sturmvogel, which one is better? Um, it really depends. It really depends on a lot of things. Uh, if you're going out and out tank busting, you're going to want to take the Polkistora. Uh, but it also depends on how accurate you are with the gun. The good thing about the gun is that uh, if you get the armored targets belts, the HVAT belts, you pen up to 150. So that basically means that with all of the shells that you have, you have 32 cannon shells, you can easily knock out, you know, maybe 16 tanks. If, um, let's say you miss every other shot, that's still 16 tanks you can take out. Where with the Sturmvogel, uh, the issue with having the Mark 108s is that you don't get that belt, which is really good at penning tanks. The most you're going to uh, pen is 30 millimeters, and that's only going to be good for armored cars. And that's not even talking about having only 200 rounds of ammo. So you're going to be fighting planes in the Sturmvogel. Uh, it's generally not a very good ground attacker. But then it has bombs, so you're kind of stuck in the middle. Maybe the place uh, where it's supposed to be is kind of a heavy attacker role, where you have the two guns, maybe you mount up the rockets, and you try and get lucky. But I generally don't like doing that, I generally like uh, not having to worry about luck. So, uh, let's go to where uh, I think it will be useful. Now, in ground uh, realistic, so tank realistic battles, obviously you have the opportunity to spawn in planes as well. And something that Germany has kind of missed is that idea of having a fighter slash attacker which uh, will be good at taking out tanks, uh, especially bombing and stuff like that. Now, you could use the Horton, right? The Horton at 7.0 is very good at that. But at 6.7, you have the Polkistora, which is also very good at that. But if you want to mount bombs and you want to still be effective in the air, the, Sturmvo the Sturmvogel can be useful. Whereas um, at 6.7, because you've got to remember, at 6.7... Germany has a wonderful lineup for uh, ground forces. You have that Tiger 2H, the Panther 2, and the Kugel. Now, if you want to swap that up a bit, you can throw in a Ferdinand or, or a Jag Panther, maybe even a Stir Emil. But at 6 7, you've got that crisp, that absolutely crisp German lineup. And before. Uh, the adding of the Sturmvogel, all you really had is the Pulkestora or the Arado to throw in there, uh, discounting the Horton and the Arado C3 since they are higher BR and the A 1A. So basically, all you had was the Pulkestora and the Arado 234. Now, the two issues with the Pulkestora and the Arado 234 is that they're not very good at fighting other planes. So. In comes the Sturmwogel, where the Sturmwogel can drop its bombs, uh, two 250s or one 500. You don't want to use the R4Ms to try and take out, um, try and take out ground units. It's not going to work. But with its two 250s, with its one 500, you can take out tanks, and then you can go and fight in the air. And generally, in ground forces, uh, you won't see uh, that many people who have the perfect uh, lineup, so perfect 6-7 lineup. Generally you'll see some prop planes, uh, stuff like that, maybe more attackers, and that's where the Stonewurgle will be very, very good. Because it will be able to take them out very easily and also have the capability to destroy with some bombs. Now, it's once again one of these middlemen, right? But it is, it is a middleman in ground forces 
which you don't have yet. So you don't have at 6-7, specifically 6-7, not looking at 7-0, but at 6-7, you do not have that attacker role. You have the HE-162, the ME-262, and the Arado. These are, well, the HE-162, we're not even going to talk about it. But the <laughs> because it, it's just, it's not good enough to be classed as a fighter at that level. So, the ME-262 and the Arado are very much focused on killing tanks, but the ME-262A2 is much more of an all-round role, so, uh, which will kill at least one tank if you're good with the bombs, and it will definitely destroy in the air with its two Mark 108s when you're facing uh, a bunch of when you're facing a bunch of prop planes or attackers or bombers. You'll be able to knock basically everything out of the air. So that, in my opinion, is where it's going to shine. Same with enduring confrontation. The idea that there is a battle over there. Well, you can get over there quickly. You can drop your bombs. You can get back. Is there aircraft which could do a certain role more effectively? Well, if we're looking at, uh, if you're going for just a complete bomber, then obviously the Arado is going to do a much better job in ground forces or in enduring confrontation. I mean, it can carry uh, up to 1,500 kilos of bombs, and they don't all drop at the same time, which is obviously an issue with the A2A with the 2250s. The Polkistorer. If you have a very accurate pilot who knows how to hit things, you can destroy tanks all day long. But you do not have that added effect that Sturmwogel gives you, which is air superiority at the same time. And that is where it will shine. So I bet um, in weeks to come, I won't really see this a lot in uh, full air realistic battles, because why not just take the A-1A? A uh, it's 0.3 BR higher, but it's a hell of a lot better. Or the Horton. The Horton is a lot better than the ME262 A2A, uh, at least from my playstyle point of view. But I would definitely use this in ground forces. I think it's a good mix of being able to kill something on the ground and then achieve air superiority. So, I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time.